So in the last part we left off being able to handle these type of URLs that start with a slash. Uh, in this part what we're going to be doing is handling URLs with a double slash. So we can just copy and paste this and say else if and we're just going to change this, delete the first one because we only want to check if the URL is a double slash. So we're going to say if the um, first two characters of the URL are double slash then we're just going to say our link is equal to obviously itself because we don't want to delete the link. We're going to say it's equal to parse URL. We're going to append that on with the dot. We're going to pass it URL again and we're going to get the scheme one more time because that's what we're missing from this link. You can see we have two forward slashes but we don't actually have a URL scheme. And once again if we run this you can see now we have HTTP and we're just missing the colon. So we're just going to append on a colon and that's it done. Let's run this again. You can see now we've sorted that link out too. The next link we have to sort out is this one here which has a dot and a forward slash and we need to add the actual domain name on because as you can, as you can probably tell if we tried to go to this uh, link it wouldn't work. So once again we'll just copy and paste and we'll change this from two forward slashes to a dot forward slash. So we're going to run this. And you can see now we have sort of our URL scheme sort of appended onto the front. So we're going to append on the complete URL scheme. We're going to add two forward slashes there. And now you can see we have a complete URL scheme here. Then what we need to do is we need to append on the host string. So we'll just say, whoops, paste that there and append it on. And we run this again and you will see we have now the host and we have the URL scheme. And now the only thing left is to get the path. So to do that we will use the dir name function in PHP. And then we will use the parse URL function one more time. We'll paste that inside and we'll change it to path. The reason we're using the dir name function is because when we get the path what it will do is it will give us uh, yeah, the file name too, but by getting the dir name function we can just get the directories on their own. And finally we just append on the file name we're looking at, we say substring the, the uh, file we're looking at, because we want to get rid of the first character so we just say one. Essentially what we're doing is we're getting the uh, file name, which is this one here, we're um, appending on the URL scheme, appending on the host, appending on the the file directory path and then finally we're taking away this dot here which is the first character um, in our link. So if we run this again you can see uh, our second link is now completed and now it, it goes to the right directory. The next link we're looking at is the link with the anchor tags. You can see this one here. So once again we'll just say else if substring and we get the link again, we'll get the first character this time because we only want to know is the first character um, a hashtag. So we'll just say is the first character a hashtag. If it is, we know it's an anchor link. And if it is an anchor link, we'll just copy the link above. We don't want to re-type uh, out all our code. And we'll just get rid of this substring and we will append on the entire link. Because if we were to get rid of the first character, we'd be getting rid of the anchor link which would mean our link wouldn't actually point to the right uh, place anymore. So we're keeping that on, we're keeping that exactly as it is, and we're going to run this now. And if we look at that, you can see we have our link. We have a slight problem, we're missing a forward slash. So what we need to do is actually just get rid of the dir name function. Let's run this again. And you can see here we have it. This is the exact link that we want. This is exactly where this anchor link would point to. So we're almost done messing about with links. We just have to sort out this sort of link and this sort of link without anything in front of it. So the next link we're going to look at is the um, link that starts with a dot dot forward slash, which is this one here. So we're going to say a substring of link is equal to the first three characters. And we want to say if the first three characters are equal to dot dot forward slash, then uh, we are going to target those sort of links. So what we're going to do is once again copy from the one above and we have the URL scheme, we have the host and the only thing left to do is we can delete the path and append on a forward slash. So let's run that. Uh, so the link that's going to change is this one here. 
And you can see, all we did was we appended on the URL scheme, appended on the host, and appended on a forward slash, and the rest of it we just left exactly as it was. Because that's exactly where this link points to. If we go back to this test page, you can see that's exactly where the link points to. And finally, we just have the JavaScript links to actually get rid of, and this link up here, test.php. So we'll start with the JavaScript one, actually. It's the easiest. We'll just say else if substring of link, we're going to get the, we're going to start in the zeroth character. We're going to go up to the eleventh character, and we'll say is equal to JavaScript with a colon. The colon's important. Otherwise, any page that was like JavaScript.php would be automatically ruled out and it wouldn't be crawled. So we want to put the colon in because that means that this is um, this is a link that's only going to run JavaScript code. And if it is, we're just going to say continue, which essentially just means just move on and forget about it and just ignore it. So we'll run that. And if we go back here, you can see the JavaScript link was now here and now it is gone. The crawler has just completely ignored it because that we don't need to crawl those sort of links because they're not actually links. So finally what we have to do is get test.php uh, sorted out. So the way we do that is we say else if substring of link, once again, start in the zeroth character, go to the fifth character and say it doesn't equal HTTPS. And then we say the substring of link, go to the fourth character, doesn't equal HTTP. In other words, if the link doesn't have a URL scheme, then we need to actually give it one or else we won't be able to follow that link. And once again, I'm just going to copy one of these and scroll up here, paste it here, and let's just run this and see what we get. So you can see we need to add the two forward slashes after the URL scheme, and we're also missing the host. So we'll get the host just by copying and pasting this. We add the two forward slashes in first and append that on, and let's have a look. Now we have the host, uh, this is it here. So we just need to put in a forward slash and we should be good to go. Let's just run this again and you can see all of our links have now been treated properly the way they should be um, with the way our crawler is gonna treat them. So it doesn't matter what kind of link our crawler comes across, no matter what kind of weird link we see, we'll be able to deal with it and our crawler can crawl it. So thanks for watching. So that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, favorite, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.